everybody. Welcome to our Snarkfest after a rather long hiatus. Tonight we are joined by Becky. Say hi. Hello. Um, Marie is still on her long vacation. So Becky's joining us and we're doing the 2021 remake of West Side Story. I have not seen this. I have seen the, I did see the original way a long time ago when I was like, in, I was in like middle school when I saw that. So I don't remember it much. So yeah, um, Becky, you are the musical expert. What do you think? I've seen the original. I've seen the original multiple times. It's one of my favorites. That said, the original doesn't really age well. Um, keep in mind, the original was a product of the of the '60s and was very much a reflection of what things were like at the time. Um, that said, this I've seen this remake before. It's actually really, really good, but it's also so different from the original that it begs the question of. How many changes can you make when doing a remake of a classic movie to where it becomes almost uncomparable to the original? Because I feel like that's what's going on here. All right, so we'll have to. It's gonna be interesting to see. Uh, I'm still, I'm still just like Steven Spielberg made this. Is like Steven Spielberg, really? I didn't know and you were into roman romance drama musical side things, but hey, I'm whatever. just going to say, considering musicals are out of Spielberg's wheelhouse, this was very surprising. I mean, I'm I have to assume that he did this as like I want to expand my I want to expand my reach. I want to do something I haven't done before, but I mean, is when you do that, it doesn't really work out. <laughs> so I mean, it's a respectable effort. It at least shows that he's not shoehorned. Well, he's not willing to yes, let himself yes, be stagnant. Yeah. So, I mean, well, I mean, you got the certain actors who are always cast type into the certain roles. And, I mean, he, he doesn't want to be that with the director. So, I don't know. It's just he, he's not one that I expect because he is kind of – he has a certain style. I don't know if that would really – I'm curious how it will work for a romance and uh, stuff like that. So, we'll have to – so, I'm interested to see how this goes. So, We'll see everybody go ahead get it pulled up on your disney plus or however you want to play it and in a three two one play and bear with me as it loads yeah mine's buffering too so okay mine just started yours still buffering oh here we go okay i see the 20th century studio you see that yep okay we're well, probably a little not exactly together, but pretty dang close. It's the best we can do considering we are over 500 miles away from each other. Bear with us. And I would walk 500 miles. Oh, wait, I can't sing that. We'll get a copyright strike. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Reminds me, I'm going to lower my volume to avoid any more of those because I'm already dealing with a couple of those on Disney. Screw you, Disney. Womp womp. Yeah. No, I've been uploading all these to YouTube and now... YouTube's just like, oh, no, this is a strike. This is a strike. It's like, oh, screw you. West Side Story. <laughs> okay. Um, this looks like rubble. What is this, World War II? Let's see. The original... The, the original takes place in the 50s, so this uh, is... Yeah. Even then, this is still a little surprising. Yeah. It's this like property is purchased this... by the New oh. York Housing Authority for slum cl clearance. Then again, if you live in the projects in New York, I'm assuming this is not a surprising site. No, I was going to say that it's either world after World War II or Detroit. Oh! Oh, snap. <laughs> so, oh, man. But, well, like yeah. I said, they are in the projects, so. Mm -hmm. You are right, and I do know World why do I? Yeah, I do know New York City did have several periods throughout its history where it's just almost a wasteland through at times. So, I mean, like in the like in the eighties, it was kind of like that too, where it was just. I mean, you didn't go to you know Times Square because if you did, you get mugged. So, yeah. I'm not specifically sure how it was in the sixties, but it, but I would not be surprised if it was like this at all. Why are we getting a big old close up of the wrecking ball? Yeah. 
I mean, granted, this I, is a very Spielberg shot. I can tell Spielberg directed this, but it's like it's a wrecking ball, dude. I will say some of the cinematic choices in this movie are interesting. Not in a good way or a bad way, just ones I wouldn't have personally thought of. Yeah. Especially like because... Said, well, and especially, too, because this is a nitpick that Nostalgia Critic has any time he does a movie musical. It's very difficult to take something made for the stage and getting it to translate in a movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've seen that many, many times. I mean, even even recently with Cats, came with Cats, it's like, you. it's so hard to do that. Well, don't get started on cats. That that movie. I think that just... I think that one was just a re. It's like I think they were thinking, oh, we can do anything now, and it's like, no, we can't. Yeah, that that movie was just one questionable artistic choice after another. Mm -hmm. But at least you won't forget it. Very sixties police car. Oh yeah. Yeah, I like I said, I can tell this is Spielberg directing. Because, like I said, he's got a very distinct style in how he directs, and this is par for the course. Oh, Although very it does so. be said, I do hope that sometime in my life I can be a part of a freaking musical number that just spontaneously breaks out. Flash mob! <laughs> they did pretty good on the period pieces. The cars are clearly very 60s. Although I don't know how safe it is to walk down the middle of the street. And just break out in an epic dance number. Yeah, no doubt. We are spiel. Oh, he cut it. What? I thought he was going to follow the paint can, but no, he cut it. That's very un Spielberg like. He's. Wow. <laughs> Like I said, some of the choices I, I, I love these people just walking. Some of them are like, what's wrong with you? Some are like, yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> There's the first subtitle of the of the movie. Come on. Waltzy jazz music playing. <laughs> I guess it is kind of waltzy. Yeah, and there's very true of New York. Oh, yeah, are we just going to walk in? Oh, are we getting... Nope, we're not paying for anything. Just take it. Yeah, uh, he wouldn't actually throw the broom down. He would actually beat you with the broom. Oh, yeah. Puerto Rico. <laughs> yep. In Puerto Rico territory. Which is actually making really good big strides to try and become a state nowadays. So we'll see if that changes soon. I'm kind of surprised it hasn't already become one in our lifetime. Yeah. Honestly, that's true too. But <laughs> yeah. And this is very much how gangs react when they see signs of rival gangs just immediately. Yep. Yeah. Bail out. Incoming. You fail as a lookout. You horribly fail if you are trying to be a lookout. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, Spielberg hard here. <laughs> Oh, oh no. <laughs> my cabbages! My melons! I know those are melons, but still. <laughs> I don't think that would actually work. Ah, uh, you're cornered. Whoop. Climb! Climb the building! One thing I will say I very much appreciate about the remake is all the Puerto Rican characters are... They are different colors, whereas in the original, all the Puerto Rican characters wearing brown face makeup. 
that was like th- the one really understandable nitpick that Rita Moreno had being part of the original was she said the makeup yeah. department had everyone in brown face and she kept trying to say, hey, you do realize that Puerto Rican people aren't just brown, right? Yeah, no, no. Although I'm very curious, how is it he didn't notice the hole in the fence? <laughs> oh, there are the police. Took him a while. Oh, we have lost Becky. She probably just dropped out. I will give her a second to. I'm back to texting now. I don't know if I should pause the movie or not, so bear with us. Um, I'm trying to get her back. She's coming back. Hold on. Bear with us, guys. Bear with us. The stream is still going, so I don't think it was anything on our end. Okay. Okay, I should be back in. Yep, okay. So I don't know what the heck happened there, but I don't know if it, like, dropped signal for a second. Okay, did you pause the movie, or? I did. I'm on 753. Okay, I did not pause it, so let me find my remote, because I kind of dropped it. <laughs> oh, shit. Let me put my oh, glass in the sink. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, we good, we good. Okay, where are you at? 7.53. 7.53. Okay, I'll tell you when to play, because I'm at 7.46, 7. Play. Okay. You good? Yep. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. If you got a problem, call the cops. Uh, if this is gang, what? What's up? I was just going to say, you got a problem, call the cops. Mm. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, if this is gang New York, don't call the cops. No. <laughs> yeah. If this is gang level New York, don't call the cops. It's not going to do any good. The only thing it's going to do is make sure bad, bad shit happens. Oh, the FBI. Baby John. What the? Okay, thank you, Spielberg. <laughs> uh, he wouldn't actually say. In, in like I said, in gang culture, you don't snitch on anything. Even if even if you've just gotten your head cracked open, you don't say it in word. Nope. Like I said, this is gang culture. Don't like I said, the even the police were their own gang. It's like you can't. How else is organized crime allowed to thrive in places like New York? Mm-hmm. 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 Reminds me of a story my dad told me. So my dad's cousin actually married a mafioso. Oh, no. And after they divorced, he gave her very, very good money to keep quiet about some of the things that she had seen while they were married. Hank. Yep. Yep. Like I said, doesn't surprise me, honestly, but it's just... Oh, man. And like like, like we were just saying, gang culture is... If someone beats you up, I don't care who they are. You don't mention it because if you do, you're just going to make things worse. And yeah, the, even the police were their own gang then. I mean, they like were. you said, there's, yeah, yeah. And you wouldn't get this up in a, up into a detective's face because it's not going to work out for you. Nope. I mean, like you said, there's a reason that organized crime was able to go on for so long in these big cities. And a lot of it is not it's not just that organized crime had a lot of money it's that they had friends in high places and even the low level police just everybody just kind of fell into their own little groups and everything just went like that is this we are we getting our first musical number here i don't know spanish though 
one one thing I do appreciate about the remake is they do intersperse a lot of Spanish dialogue throughout the movie. That's good. And it makes enough sense contextually to where you don't necessarily need the subtitles to understand what they're saying. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, here, like I said, I don't know Spanish, but I get the idea of what they're saying. Yeah. I Personally, I think that's really, really clever. I That's something that the original kind of tried to do, but didn't really commit all the way. When was the when was the original made? Nineteen sixty three. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So they really wouldn't they really wouldn't want to do that in nineteen sixty three because they were just kind of recovering from that, and the last thing they would want to do is reignite those old flames. True. It was clear. So I said, and uh, notice this kid who. Would probably be like 17, smoking a cigarette. No one cares. Like I said, this is in yeah, at that time you could at that time you could be a six-year-old with a cigarette in your mouth. No one would give a crap. Yeah. I was I actually saw my mom today, and that was another conversation we had, is it was just a different time, you know. There were no smoking and non-smoking sections. Yep. If you smoked in public, no one cared. Well, I mean, it just reminds me when I was growing up, it'd be like my dad would give me a give me a 20, say, go give me a pack of cigarettes and you can spend some money on candy. I would do that. No problem. No one would give a crap. Try yeah. doing that now. Good luck <laughs> doing that now. <laughs> no. I mean, granted, a little bit was I lived in a small town where everybody knew everybody. So <laughs> keep do keep that in mind. True. So, I mean, if. Yeah, because, I mean, it would be a lot of, like, a case of, like, my dad would come in, like, oh, yeah, I gave your son cigarettes, and we'd be, like, my dad would go, hmm, I didn't ask him to go get me cigarettes. Let's see what happened. <laughs> no, but obviously I never did that, but I do know some kids who did. <laughs> and like I said, it never went well. Got a question for you, Lieutenant. Uh How tall did you be before you shrank? I like how they use the, I like the shrank there. That was good. That was clever. Yeah, very clever. Yep. Yeah. Again, where it's like, everybody knows what you mean, but you're not really saying anything bad. <laughs> Frankie sign time. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, Puerto Ricans are Americans. They are that they are. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. They, they mentioned the forty-eight states. Yeah, so yeah, this would be before Alaska and Hawaii were states. Yeah. I'm trying to think, when did they become? Oh, well, well, I don't remember when Alaska and Hawaii became states, but I'm well. I think it was well, like nineteen seventies. I mean, I'm gonna real quick check. I would say this. I would say this would take place a little bit after they became states, because I want to say they got their statehood in the late 1940s. Because I know there were still territories during World War II, but I don't think they yeah. got statehood until a little bit after. Alaska became a state in 1958. Okay. Not sure about Hawaii. 1959 for Hawaii. I thought Alaska. I thought it was the other way around, but hey. I thought I thought Hawaii became a state before Alaska, but hey, what do I know? Oh no, I knew Hawaii was the last one. Yeah, no, it was no. According to that, yeah, Hawaii was the last one. When you're jet, you're jet all the way. <laughs> one of the most famous numbers in this show. I have a cat on me. Yay! Yay. Good cat. Yay. Cuddle your cat, oh, cuddle your cat, oh, meow, meow, meow. We're watching a musical and Becky goes into a musical number. Why not? <laughs> it's kind of my only cat. <laughs> I thought, I know what you said, but my ears heard something else that just made me go, oh, God, no. Oh, dear. Only cats. That'd be like the that'd be like the furry version of OnlyFans. Oh dear God, my brain. Yes, that's the point of the joke. Oh my head. 
It's like I I just need someone to do like brain bleach to me because seriously. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, really? <laughs> I was not expecting those lyrics. Yep, they went there. Yeah, they did. Oh, God, yep, and that, again, if you yep, see huh? gang members, you if you saw gang members, even if they were kids just playing in the street, no, you get the kids out. Yep. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, even now, even now in gang territory, I mean, you'll read about like a little kid who's just sitting on a porch and just gangs decide that they're no, this is ours. And yeah, things happen. And it's, it's tragic and horrible. Although so far we've only seen two gangs considering the amount of territory in New York. We've seen a little bit surprised. It's only two. Used to like dancing? What? <laughs> I swear on what's holy. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're going to screw up your life. I don't think that's, a, I don't think that's ever a conversation that ever happened in gang. <laughs> Uh, okay, never mind. I thought you froze for a second, but no, you're good. Nope, I'm still here. Yep, yeah, you're good. Like I said, you weren't moving, so I was like, oh, God, no, but you're good. Like I said, we're good. It's like you're still in prison, yeah, and there's another thing. In gang cultures, yeah, you'd go to prison, you'd get out, nothing changed. Nope. And the old wooden boxes, nowadays we would have plastic crates instead of those wooden ones, but hey. I will say, another thing I appreciate is the fact that they did try to elaborate on Tony's backstory a little bit in this remake. Because yeah, in this version, Tony did actually serve time in prison. Yeah. Well, I mean, this scene is very much just exposition, getting what, getting what needs to be known to the audience. Yeah. So, And it, it, it flows well. They're doing it very well. I mean, that, we don't really, that's... like I said, we don't really get this in the original. We don't know a whole lot about what Tony was like. We don't know a whole lot about why he's no longer, like, associated as much with the Jets. Yeah, he want. Yeah, he's trying to free himself from it. But yeah, he's trying to turn over a new leaf, mm -hmm. which is very hard to do. In this version, yeah. too, it's it's also a little bit implied that the woman he works for adopted him. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I gotta say, I keep expecting Chris Hemsworth to just appear. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why? I don't know. It's just everything about this just makes me think like Chris Hemsworth's gonna it's like just come a crumb come in from somewhere. I don't know why. That would have been cool, though. <laughs> no, but he was way too busy at this time. 2021, yeah, he was way busy with Marvel projects and everything. Well, they've been filming this since 2018. Oh, he may. Yeah. The legendary Rita Moreno. I see that. Amazing. Yep. I'm a paying customer. Yeah. Well, then you're going to have to start paying. Yeah, I, I like that. You've been stealing stress from me since you were six. Yeah. Ah, there's a very... Yeah, and uh, can we just take a moment to for inflation? He's got a candy bar, five cents. Yeah. 
Back in the day when you can get a candy bar for five cents. Yep. No, but it's just a conver it's a, it just reminds me of a conversation I've had a lot of times about oh, it's like, oh, this is the new highest grossing movie. When in reality, that doesn't mean a whole lot because like uh, just as an example, Gone with the Wind is these is has by far and away the most tickets sold ever for any movie. And that's just because it's been re-released about 18 million times. That was four hours but, of my life. I will never get back. Yeah. But those but those tickets would cost like 35 cents. So as a result, you can't really qualify it to like now with Star Wars or, or Avengers just because they're so different. I mean, you go to a movie now, the ticket cost, depending where you are, probably five to ten bucks, depending where you are. Uh, versus way back then, like I said, it was like 35 cents. I don't know how much theater costs for you now, but... But for me, around it's around depending on what movie you're going to see, probably around seven eight bucks. So unless you're unless you're like me and has had, and have had a movie pass since you were thirteen, and in which case you pretty much see movies for free now. <laughs> well, like I said, I've had the movie pass for a while, and I have so many free movies to go see. It's just I haven't been able to use them. So. Oh, nice reflection shot. Very much Spielberg. Oh yes. Like I said, he, Spielberg's got a very distinct style in how he directs, and you can tell when he's directing something. And like I said, this is very clearly him. And it was working very well. I didn't think it would work this well, but hey, I give him props. I will say, because again, this is a nitpick that Doug has when he does reviews of movie musicals, is that it's very difficult to get something meant for the stage to translate well to film. Spielberg's actually doing really good here. Definitely, definitely. Oh, yeah, and now he's going to dance with her, yep. <laughs> I actually really like how they did this song, too, in this version, because in the, in the original, I like this song, but I felt like the way they staged it in the original just felt very flat. Yeah. I don't remember the original much at all. Like I said, I was in middle school when I saw that, so... And plus, I think it was like middle school musical music class when I actually saw it. So, like I said, it's not something I remember at all. No, I've I've seen the original so many times I've lost count. Well, like I said, you're the musical expert on these, not me. <laughs> the only musical I've seen any amount of any decent amount of times is Singing in the Rain. So. He's got a good singing voice. You gotta give him props. Oh yeah, because that's something that that's something that always gets me with a lot of musicals is, is can these people sing? <laughs> and that's that's what I what I appreciate too about this as opposed to the original is it's these actors singing in the original. It was a different actor doing the singing voice. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, a lot of times they had to do that at that time just because of the technology they had. That's true too. We've come a long way. A great example is a great example is in in like singing in the rain where there's that scene of him like singing in the rain. That's not actually him singing because at that time they had a device to keep water off the off the um, lens of the camera, and that thing would be so amazingly loud you couldn't get any 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 sound on those takes. So they would have to record the sound and add it in afterwards. Yep, like with the original West Side Story. If you ever rewatch it, that is Rita Moreno singing in America. But later in the movie, for a boy like that, that's not Rita Moreno. That's a different actress. Oh, wow, really? Wow. Uh huh. I wonder why they had to do that. I wonder that too. Yeah. And uh, real quick, oh, oh, here we go. This is our main female lead. I forget who's Rhea. Thank you. But a real quick movie note for people is, you know how they got that whole checkerboard thing that the reason they do that is because, at I mean, not so much now. Is that Selena Gomez? No. No, it Rachel, yeah. Rachel something. I can't remember her last name. Okay. Okay. Anyway, 
But um, the reason they had that whole clack thing is because at that time they would need to have a visual reference and a sound reference. Cause like I said, they have to record them separately. So they need, so they had to do that clack that way. It's like, okay, they can line it up and that way they could line up the sound in the video together. <laughs> okay. I've done that before <laughs> where it's just, I've been so stressed off. I've just been and just flop on out on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and these would be Puerto Rican women who probably just came here. Yep. And when I say came, I mean just arrived to New York, just immigrated. Yep. And that I was mean, the whole that was the whole point of this movie, especially like with Anita's character development throughout the movie. You see somebody who's very vibrant, who's very excited and optimistic about the American dream. And then at the end of the movie, you see a lot of Anita's optimism just completely dashed and gone out the window. And I feel like, I feel like compared to the original two, they really, really try to drive home that point of the dark side of the American dream. Mm -hmm. No, that's one thing that, especially in, in like big cities like this, you could... I mean, you come to America expecting to have, you know, like you, like you said, the American dream, but you're going into just gang-ridden, gang horror and, you know, corruption and stuff like that. And just all your dreams are just beat out of you. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not always the case. There are plenty of stories about immigrants coming to America and just hitting it big. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I don't, want, I don't want to make it sound like everything was bad, but yeah, a lot of it was, Yeah. <laughs> I'm noticing so many crosses, and but like but like we mentioned, they're from Puerto Rico. Yeah, it makes sense. Yep. I I will say, like, even though it didn't win the Oscar, the fact that this was nominated for an Oscar for best costume design is very well deserved. The costumes are just stunning and very, like, very appropriate for the era. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of one thing. I don't really mention the Oscars anymore just because winning an Oscar is not really a thing anymore just because it's, it's a dog winning an Oscar show. no longer is winning an Oscar is no longer I had the best. Winning an Oscar is I'm the most politically. I'm the best politically. And when I say politically, I don't mean I voted for this person. I mean, I can kiss this person's ass and therefore get an Oscar. It's a dog and pony show. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, yeah. I mean, that's why for the past couple of years. That's partly yeah. why I still enjoy it is because I'm a slut for a good dog and pony show, but. <laughs> Fair enough. But I mean, but that's why. At I mean, least like, I, this... Hey, at least I own it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Well, I'm not. I'm not judging for it, but it's just let's be real. I mean, because how many times like best picture for the past couple of years are have been movies that no one has seen. No I one's mean, even heard of. Yeah, well, I mean, like uh, the last uh, great example is the last movie I know of winning the Oscar is The Shape of Water. And how many people do I know have seen that movie? Zero. I don't, have that you seen that movie? I feel like had at least a decent marketing team behind, and everybody knows who Guillermo del Toro is. That's so I true. feel like that I feel like is not the best example, but still. But yeah, but it's still it's like it's a movie that no one saw. Because like I said, I don't know anybody who saw that movie. I like I said, I don't. If you saw it, you're literally one person I know who saw it. So I know a few people, but like I said, at least compared to other nominees that year, that one had a yeah. better marketing team. That's true. Like you, like you did say, Guillermo. Guillermo uh, yeah. I can't say his name. Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro. Toro. Thank you. Or as one of the yeah. actor, one of the little actresses in one of his movies called him Mr. Totoro. <laughs> yeah. I That's forgot which awesome. movie it was, but one of the actresses was a little little four year old Japanese girl, and she couldn't she didn't speak a whole lot of English and couldn't say yeah. Guillermo del Toro, so she just started calling him Mister Totoro on set. Hey, you know what? If it works, it works. Yeah. Well, that, well, that reminds me of when I first started working for the school district. I was working with a guy who came to America, who was an immigrant to America, and I no one could pronounce his name. 
So he just insisted everybody call him Mr. T. And everybody called him Mr. T. And it was awesome. And he would and he loved it. He owned it so much. Yeah. There's a there's a gentleman at my job. I forgot what his full first name is, but he just insists that everyone calls him T. And I'm like, if that's what you want to be called, okay. Mind you, it had to, you call it with the guy in my experience, example. You had to call him Mr. T. If you just yes. called him T, he would just, he would just look directly in your eye. I paid the fool. You have to have the Mr. <laughs> so in front of Mr. It, the Mr. T. T. <laughs> so, oh yeah, and very much fifty style dancing. So hey. Oh God, yes. Oh, dude, you are seriously underdressed, there, man. The best part is that's not a dude. That character is a wow, very, really? very butch girl. Wow. Yeah, that, that, that. that character is literally named anybody. Wow. And anybody's whole shtick is anybody. Oh, yeah, they, just, they, they just hung a lantern on it right there. Yeah. I did not. Wow. Yeah, that and yep very much if a police if, at this time if a police officer took your drink you give it to him and you don't take it back yep still like that mhm mm very true depending on where you are mind you of course fair fair <sighs> yep and this I do know a lot of stuff like this happened where if if multiple gangs were at a at an event, there would actually be a very clear divide of where one side is and where the other side is. Yep. Yep. Kind of like this, except it'd be a little bit more pronounced. <laughs> and I don't think they'd be having rival dance-offs. Yep, and let yeah, and this will very much happen if you oh, bumped yeah. into somebody. The only the only thing is, I think the police would actually. They start making. The times, I don't, wouldn't be surprised if the police were actually enforcing. Uh, no, you don't cross this specific line, and you don't cross this specific line. You don't go anywhere near each other. Well, the pretty girls would be blind to beat up on each other too. I was just going to say, I mean, considering the time that this would take place in, integration was just starting to be a thing in public schools. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we got the one public official who's trying to, you know, be nice, everybody dance with each other. Yeah, it's but no one pays attention. There it is. Speaking of still sponsored functions, good luck getting that fast now. I was just going to say on today's episode of jokes that won't age well. Yep. <laughs> oh. Realistically, the only way you could actually get like a divide like this to solve is if like the like the most respected guy were to go to the most respected girl on the other side and dance with her. That's the only way you could actually break a divide like this. That is true. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise it would just be this very this very clear split of And like I said, there's going to be that one public official who just no one is paying attention to. And man, you are really, really sticking out like a sore thumb and clearly uncomfortable. <laughs> Where are you going? Oh, yeah, here we go. Okay. Okay, where do you want to go? Okay. Moody? <laughs> yep. Tell him I said hi. <laughs> yep. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And notice how they all everybody just 
It's like, oh, you have to dance with the person in front of you, and no one follows. Yeah. No one pays attention. Yep. Like I said, and yeah, you're just going to get pressed away. Uh, here's the, again, like I said, how they're how although they're dancing with their specific partner, they're separated very clearly. Yeah. Oh, hero. <laughs> Just keep your nose clean and don't do anything stupid. You'll be fine. Yep. Good luck. <laughs> well, there's a reason I said good luck. No, but like I said earlier, it's like, oh, is this this is just be the guys? No, the girls would be just as against each other as as the guys are. If not, not very more much so. so. Yeah. Although I will say, if this were an actually actual dance, this would be kill it. Yeah, oh yeah, you just saw those two hissing at each other. If this were an actual dance, the choreography would be nowhere near this good. Yeah, no doubt. Although that is one thing I miss about high schools is going to dances like this, so. Oh, she's taking the jacket off. What are you doing, dude? <laughs> Why not, dude? Go for it. Own it. Go home, Chino. You're drunk. Own it. Totally own it. Yeah, just go for it, man. Yeah, here we go. Trumpet music. Yeah. <laughs> Although I don't know if you can get that high of a pitch on a trumpet without an actual um, mute in it. I don't know for certain. I'm not a musical guy. <laughs> oh, and now these two see each other from across the room. Yeah. Are they guys She's are they gonna dance together? I'm sorry, very Romeo and Juliet here. Oh yes. I mean that's the whole point. Well, to be fair, yeah. Oh, it reminds me of a I forgot where this was. It was like a Tumblr post or something. He's my Romeo, but I'm not his Juliet. Well, then that makes you Rosaline, and you survived the fucking play. <laughs> I like it. Now the question is: Do these two know each other from from outside, from before the movie started? That is the question, because I mean, it's implied they all go to the same school. Yeah. So yeah, it, it isn't. Yeah, they would know each other then. <laughs> And notice how they have to dance underneath the bleachers where no one can see each other. Yep. I like that. That was kind of clever. Mm -hmm. like, I, and like I said, Spielberg's got a very distinct style. I don't like how, if you look in the background between the bleachers, you can tell that there's not, I mean, they're just kind of wandering around. They're not really dancing anymore. That's kind of a fault. It's like they should all, be, and now, yeah, they're all slow dancing. That's kind of one thing is like if the camera's not on you, you need to feel like there's like you have a life outside the camera. And that's one fault that Steven Spielberg has a lot of times is that a lot of times if you watch the movies, you really don't get that sense. <laughs> you don't like dancing? No, I mean, yeah, I just. Uh... 
I will say another thing I appreciate about this compared to the original is the original, it felt like they were trying too hard to be mini adults, basically, when I mean the story, they're supposed to be teenagers. Here they yeah. encapsulate the teenage awkwardness perfectly. Mm -hmm. Well, it just reminds me of the first time I ever danced with Kendra. She she literally said something like that to me. And I'm like, I, 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 cause I'm so nervous. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> nah, yeah, here they they get it right. Mm -hmm. I've never seen wow, really? <laughs> ah. Oh, wow, that's aggressive there, babe. <laughs> I also really appreciate that the by the book line is taken directly from Romeo and Juliet, the part where they kiss for the first time and she says, you kiss by the book. That that line wasn't in the original West Side Story. And oh gosh, I appreciate the fact that oh, Spielberg at least is taking time to honor the source material. Really? Yeah. Dude, you gotta hide. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yep. Yep. Yeah, there's nothing that... Yeah, here, very, like I said, very much. Now, here's... The, she should be trying to intercept herself and be like, no, it's not, you know... Just, just all she needs to do is just be like, oh, we just bumped into each other. That's it. And that would, I mean, it wouldn't solve it, but it would, just, I mean, the tension would be reduced a lot. Yep. Like I said, I appreciate they at least try to make the teenage awkwardness. Oh, there we go. The friendly yeah. powwow. Yep, very much. You want to start? Yep. I mean, good luck. I mean, even, here's the even talking to her would be very much a social faux pas. Let's put it that way. Yep. Yeah. Okay. They, I don't. Okay. I don't care. Even in gang wars, the bathroom is kind of a. It's a neutral zone. It's it's no man's land. You never. They don't fight in the bathroom unless something mm -hmm. really really bad has happened. Oh yeah. I mean, I I don't know I don't know what it is, but I do know that it's always been this like this is kind of a piece of group. It's been you a weird of... piece of agreement, and it's always been unspoken to. But yeah, like I said, it they wouldn't so they wouldn't be fighting here. They would probably be like, no, we'll fight. We'll you know set up where we're gonna fight, but. Again, you wouldn't, they wouldn't be getting this aggressive. It'd be very, like I said, the bathrooms have always been kind of a, like I said, there's an unspoken rule of you just don't fight here. Nope. Same thing with girls, interestingly enough. We have the same rule. That doesn't surprise me, honestly, but. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's like weapons. Oh, we're just going to do a fist. No, everybody's going to be bringing a knife. Come on. I wouldn't be surprised if a few people show up with guns. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just I just remembered Anchorman. Rick, where'd you get a hand grenade? I don't know. <laughs> There's another movie we should probably do sometime. Yep. 
Yeah, their switch blanks in their teeth. And here's the thing: a lot of rumors like that totally believed. Yeah. Now, I don't think they would have actually called him out. I think it would have been, no, like, because, like I said, it's very much hush hush. You don't tell anybody. So, if someone were to ask, you know, who was that guy, I don't even think you'd tell. Him. Like I said, even, even if it were, right, even if it were a rival. Yep, you fucked up, dude. Yeah, I know this song. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Another very popular piece from this show. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> who would turn the light? I, I, I. I... It's like, who would be turning? Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Danner. <laughs> Is he going to start dancing with the broom? <laughs> okay. I kind of wish he had. This <laughs> opportunity. That would have been, been the thing. But... Oh, come on. Don't piss off the bird lady, you dick. Just feeding the pigeons, which, mind you, are are basically rats with wings. So I don't mind you disrupting the pigeons, but you're disrupting the woman there. That's the problem. Not like you're not disturbing the neighborhood by going around singing late at night. Yeah, going around <laughs> singing in the middle of the night. Neighbors are like, I don't care who Maria is, just shut up. <laughs> and tight little girls coming in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, that was a good shot. I like that one. Yeah. Th this was a nice touch. Just the little okay. stuff you see going on yeah. in the background. I'm wondering where all that water came from. Was it raining? Then why were having? Why would everybody have their clothes out to dry? It really makes no sense. I I will say, the, like with some of the stuff going on in the background, when Spielberg gets it right, he gets it right. Yeah. Well, like I said, a lot of it is you you know like these like the clothing is in the background. It's like why would they hang be hanging the clothing in the background? And granted, this does fit the time, very much fits the time. But oh, there she is! Oh no! Uh, that's barbed wire. Yep, and here we get our balcony scene. Yep. Romeo, Romeo, where are where for art thou, Romeo? Yeah, my brother's so angry now. He might, yeah. I'll make him like me. Good luck, dude. Yeah, have fun with that. Yeah, this isn't the this isn't the time frame of oh, we got into an argument. So let's go, let's go bowling and work out our differences. No, it doesn't work like that. Not in this time frame, buddy. No. And everybody's got a fire escape. Yep. So, fun fact, did you know that West Side Story was, was originally supposed to be called East Side Story, and instead of our star-crossed lovers being a white boy and a Puerto Rican girl, it was supposed to be a Jewish boy and a Catholic girl? Really? 
Yeah. Interesting. But when the um the original writers of the musical were putting were putting the show together, they were like, nah, it would be it'd be more modern and more provocative if it were a difference of two completely different ethnic groups, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm not really sure you get a you know a Jewish versus Catholic split as defined as you get like this. Oh yeah. He just wants to talk to you. <laughs> I think I kissed her great. Right here. What are you doing? Okay, we're going to get the tightrope walk here. Nice. Yeah, see me tomorrow. No one else. Oh, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if those are the original names of the ones, but Maria, good name. Tony, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, the, Grant, the, I, can't, the, I can't really think of a lot of male names that would really flow off the tongue that would fit perfectly. So fair. Yeah, you know, get I mean, I mean, these were the names of the characters in the original, and I guess with Tony, his backstory is he's he's Polish American, and Tony is short for Anton. Yeah, that yeah, Tony would be a Polish name. So yeah, that's fair. Yep. There's actually a novelization of the original movie that uh, that um, that's out there. I ended up reading the novelization. It's actually really, really good. It sort of gives an added depth to the characters I wouldn't have thought about. Hmm. Nice. That is grand. That's something that always happens is when you get the novelizations for any any movie or play, you just get so much more insight into the character. Oh, yeah. God, I am hoping her brother does not peek his head through that window, because if she does, you are going to die. I think that's kind of what I like about this version compared to the original, too, is there's the added tension of, is somebody in her family going to be peeking out that window? Yep. It's like, hey, why are there, what's this singing going on? Oh, hello. The other thing, too, that I like compared to the original is... While I'm not crazy about these ac actors in particular, they have way better chemistry than the original Tony and Maria. Fair enough. The original, they had no chemistry at all. It was incredibly <laughs> boring to watch. It's like watching this plank try to get along with this other plank. It's like... Yeah. That is uh, that is something that always gets me about movies is get these bad actors who are I shouldn't say bad actors but actors that would just don't get the direction that they need. And that's the Although that reminds me of um there when I was in high school I remember I was working the stage crew for a play a fiddler in the roof. Oh, and, um, that's a good one. Yeah, no, but uh, it reminds me because they have the whole you know they're like this the daughter falls in love with this one guy. I don't remember the character. Oh yeah. The daughter the falls just... in love with the tailor. And then the second oldest yeah. daughter falls in love with this activist, political activist. Student. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember who, I don't remember which couple it was, but I do remember this. The two did not have any chemistry at all. So the director of the play made them actually go on a date. Oh. <laughs> and, yeah. It helped. They actually had better chemistry after that, but yeah, it was, but I, I will never forget that. I've God. never... Actually, no, that's not true. I was going to say, I've never gotten to play a couple with anybody, but when I took an acting class my last semester of junior college, um, 
you remember Dylan, right? Yes. Okay, so um, for our second uh, scene work project, we got paired up, uh, paired off together, and we mm -hmm. had to do a scene from a play called The Blythe Spirit, in which I was basically Dylan's dead wife. Oh no! <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was Dylan's dead wife, and I had come back to haunt him for replacing me. <laughs> if that wasn't foreshadowing as fuck of our relationship, nope. I don't know what is. <laughs> Interesting. But yeah, talk about, talk about one of those times where it's just like, wow. Interesting. <laughs> No, mind you, I like I said, I was always a stage crew. I never, I I mean, as part of doing the stage crew, I had to do a few acting classes just to be like, just so I would know what it's like to be on stage and stuff. But I never, but I never, I never liked doing the stage stuff. I was, I am, I was always stage crew. I I prefer being behind the scenes. The only time I was ever on stage was once there for whatever reason. I had to get from this side of the stage to the other side of the stage to set something up. And when I was running across, they opened the curtains a little bit. And then, you know, thankfully they closed them right away, but I'll never forget that. Of the curtains open like this little much, I look out and just like, um, <laughs> just close the curtains. <laughs> but yeah, I, I have been a few extras in the back, in the little movies I made in high school, though. I will say that. Um, why are you just laying on the bed like that? Wouldn't your head be on the pillow? Um, and you didn't even get undressed. Wow. Although I do not know a woman who could get out of bed and have perfect hair and makeup like that. Right? <laughs> and she only just realizes now that she hasn't gotten undressed. Oh, man. Yeah, that makeup will be smeared all over your sheets there, babe. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Just make it look like you got bedhead. There you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. That's better. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. That's I kind of love better. how it, with this scene you get to see Maria's entire thought process without her so much as saying a single word. Yeah, very much. That was very good. <laughs> Six kids marry a cat. Good line. Granted, at this time, it was not uncommon for par for families to have like six, seven. Even I was just going to say. I mean, six children would be a modest sized family by that by that era standards. Yeah. Oh, well, Maria Teresa! Wow. <laughs> Shh, they don't care. <laughs> Again, they do not care. You're lucky they don't just start. You're lucky they're not stripping each other right now, okay? Let's just be real. Well, I mean, in, a, in an apartment that size, there's no such thing as modesty, let's be honest. Like a gangster. Well, he is a gangster. Yeah, there it is. Oh God, how would how do you? Yeah, you wouldn't even mention his name because he's gonna be like, "How do you know his name?" A Yankee. Yep, there it is. A Polak. Oh, there's another one. Yep. Like like I said, um, part of Tony's backstory is that he's Polish American. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I, li- I like the Yankee line better. I wasn't expecting to go with a Pollock, but hey. Yeah. Well, it's like, there's... I don't know. I don't yeah, okay. remember. Well, I finally saw what C says, like, oh, we're going to marry. It's like, I just danced with the guy, you idiot. Yeah. Boxes. Yeah. That's another thing I appreciate. Would... That's another thing I appreciate compared to the original is in the original, we don't know what Bernardo's like. We don't know what his family is like. We don't know what exactly brought him to America. Just, we don't I know what his thoughts are. We guy. just yeah, we just see him as being the lead of the rival gang. Mm-hmm. I mean, here, they give Bernardo a little more depth. They actually make us like him. They make us feel bad for him when he gets killed off in about 30 minutes. Yep. Spoiler alert! (laughs) (laughs) Like I said, I've seen the original. I do know he dies, so... I know his character is destined for the grave. I'm sorry, if you don't know who... If you don't know who dies in this movie, I can't help you. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you said, this the original came out in 1963 or something. If you don't know what happens, seriously, read a book, all right, people? Like I, mean, I said, even I, mean, old even, Juliet, I was just going to say, even if you've never seen the original, if you go in watching this, knowing this is based off of Romeo and Juliet, you can pretty much guess who's going to die. Yeah, you can put you can put two and two together. Yeah. So every and everybody's wearing a cross necklace. <laughs> Very Puerto Rican. Oh, she ain't. Wow. <laughs> I kind of wonder if that was intentional with her character design. Well, who knows? Like very much in very much in the wearing it right now, considering this is supposed to be morning and she just hadn't put it on yet, but well, and even then, like if you compare what Anita wears like early on in the earlier acts of the movie compared to like the last like third arc of the movie, mm-hmm. granted she's in mourning towards the last arc of the movie, but yeah, oh, yeah. Anita the way Anita dresses starts out is just, you know, very very spicy and risque and then towards the later end of the like the later part of the movie you know when anita's optimism is pretty much dashed at that point we see that what she's wearing gets a little more conservative Mm -hmm. yeah just like i said the costume design and just the way the characters are expressed through the costumes is just beautiful Mm -hmm. Definitely. And again, notice how everybody's hanging their clothes out with each other. Yep. Again, very much ni- very much 1950s, 1960s New York. And it's just weird that they had this, there's this unspoken bond of, I won't take your clothing, you don't take mine. Because like yep. I said, these, these ropes are tied to someone else's apartments. And they're drying their clothes with one another's. Hey, you get more courtesy there than you do at your local laundromat. Very true. (laughs) Did you know the I Know You Do was an improvised line in the original movie? Really? Wow. Yeah. Nice. In the original, when they were shooting this scene, the actress playing the girl who said that literally just bust sounds like i know you do and the director liked it so much he kept it so they clearly decided to use it here too yeah i mean grant that's something that always makes me wonder about in movies like this of what's exactly scripted and what is actually ad-libbed because there's a lot because a lot of times in a lot of scripts it's there is it's not a a note for note of you say this you say this you say this a lot of times it's just say something that makes sense oh yeah that when I got my very first voice acting job, one of the one of the first things the director told me, you know, like I used to be so nervous about like going off script. Like if I did, I'd be like, oh God, sorry, should I redo that? He's like, no, if it feels natural, keep going with it. Yep. 
Well, that reminds me. I don't remember. I don't remember which voice actor it was, but they were talking about how they accidentally added a curse word. I think it was Travis Willingham, but I could be wrong. But he was just, you know, he was just, you know, doing his line, and he just, said, you know, he just said a curse, and you know, he was. Never mind, this would be like one of his first roles, and he was like, uh, you know, after after they were done recording, he was like, should we redo that? And the director's like, no, that was perfect, man. So. Yeah, a lot of times, I mean, most of the times, like I said, with ad libbing, more often than not, it's just adding a curse word or something like that. But you will have times where it's just say something that makes sense or sing a song, even. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I like that. She, I like this actress. She's oh, she's stealing the show. I love it. This is one of those times where somebody had won an Oscar and I'm like, you deserved it. She's stealing every scene she, she's in and I love her. She's awesome. I don't remember her name, but during her Oscar acceptance speech, she said, This is this is for the Puerto Rican girls and this is for this is for the queer girls. And I'm like, yes, this is how you give an ex this is how you give an accepted speech. You are killing it, yeah. babe. Well, like I said, she's killing it on screen. Like I said, she's owning every scene she's in. Oh, yeah. I love it. I mean, regardless of regardless of her uh, her Oscar speech, which, I mean, mind you, I don't really watch. The only Oscar speech I've ever, ever, ever watched has been Robin Williams, but I think you can piece together why. But, but yeah, like I said, she's just, even here. She has such personality in how she's dancing that even though there's a whole line of people, your eyes are naturally drawn to her. Yeah. Like, they they couldn't have picked anybody better to be Anita. They really couldn't have. Oh! Oh, snap. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a mic drop moment right there. Yep. Like, yeah, right here is a prime example. I mean, mind you, it's her dress is a little bit brighter than everybody else's, but she just has that was, such and that was personality probably, and charisma and how she moves that your eyes are drawn to her. Well, not only that, but I feel like that was an, that was an intentional like costume choice as well to make her a little bit brighter than the other girls, because that's how they did in the original, too. Yeah, oh, the little kid's joining in, too. Yep. So long as the little kids were a part of your group, no problem. If they were a different part, oh dear. <laughs> but again, like I said, it's just she's so uh, she's like I said, she's stealing every scene, she, everything she's done, and I love it. She's awesome. She's she is vibrant. Yes, she is. I like her. She is a spitfire. Very much. I like it. Oh dear, he's gonna be practicing. Ah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh I'm my ready. god! And the very, the so nervous that you're practicing out exactly what you're gonna say, and then when you actually see her again, everything you prepare to say, gone. <laughs> Best way to learn a new language: fall in love with somebody from that culture. Very true. Oh Very God, true. that no, that's that's literally how my Spanish teacher ended up becoming fluent in Spanish. Well, hey, <laughs> his um, he was I don't remember how it happened, but he was spending a little time down in um, uh, Colombia, and that's where he met his wife. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. He was, he was like, yeah, I learned Spanish because my wife's Colombian, and um. Yeah, I, I brought her back from Columbia with me. One of the boys in the class was like, now that's a souvenir. <laughs> I, it reminds me, I heard a story. I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard a story about how at some convention, a guy and a girl met and they it was like in one of these like things of love at first sight, but they spoke different languages, but they could both speak Klingon. So that's oh, how they communicated wow. until they could learn each other's languages. Again, I don't know if that's true or not. I've only read the, I've only heard it. So don't quote me as that. But if it's an urban legend, it's one hell of an urban legend. Yeah, no doubt. 
I mean, mind you, I do know cases of like people, like people falling in love. Like uh, this guy falls in love with a deaf girl, and he know he knows sign language, so they communicate like that. I do know stories of that, but I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if that Star Trek story is true or not. I hope it is. I want it to be true so bad, but I don't know if it is or not. Oh, geez. Walking down the street, even arm in arm with each other would be very. Uh, dude, your best friend? Yeah. Isn't that, wasn't that supposed to be his best friend? Yep. I will say another thing I appreciate about this compared to the original is they at least show Tony and Maria trying to spend time together and getting to know each other. Uh, I will so say. That that train was the train door not closing at this time. It doesn't matter. The train was going to take off even if that door ain't closed. Yeah. But no, nah, at least they show the two of them trying to spend time together and like getting to know each other. So it doesn't granted the, the, the rate at which they fell in love is again, more unrealistic than a Disney movie, but at the same time, at least they tried. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, here, it's like, we need to stop these two from fighting. And it's like, I honestly don't know if you can. Like, no, good luck with that, dude. Yeah, and here, it's like, you're kind of, you being the guy in the situation, you're kind of the guy who has to put, to be the you have to be the hammer to hit the nail on the head. I, I mean, mind you, she, I mean, she wants to do it too, but she, but like I said, this being the case of being like in the fifties, sixties, women weren't, women really couldn't do that. So we kind of get to see a little bit of taste of that towards the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, someone's got arrested. Mm -hmm. This next scene, she I actually, the... huh? That woman that we saw, she looks like she's still in the dance clothing. You guys got such a pickle. Mm, this next scene, the way they the way they chose to choreograph and really interpret the next song that they're going to do, I actually really appreciate. I wouldn't have expected it. Yeah, here. Everybody knows where the rumble is, but they're not going to say a word. Of course. Everybody knows what's going to happen. Everybody, Like I said, everybody knows, but no one's going to say a damn thing. Snitches get stitches. And I mean, here's the thing. It's it's very much a case of if you were to if if you were to say something, you wouldn't have to worry about the enemy gang doing something. You'd worry about your own gang doing something. Wow, Guinea Hyena. Ooh. I love that line. That's a good one. <laughs> God, they couldn't have picked a better actress to play anybody. <laughs> they couldn't have. Ouch. <laughs> Like, like I said, the casting choices for this movie, I can't say enough good things about. Yeah. Okay, you're lucky you didn't get body slammed there, buddy. Right. I'm a little bit surprised that the police didn't pull guns already, considering the time frame. Right. Sit yourself someplace and don't move till I get back. Good luck with that. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, uh, there's no way that the, all the police officers would have gone after that one person. Someone right. would have stayed behind. Yeah, Rookie. 
I love that he's role playing this and I love it. Oh yeah. I mean that's the whole point of this song is they're making fun of the cops. Mm -hmm. Now mind you, this is a way that rival gangs could actually start teaming up with each other is going after the police at this time. So Oh yeah. I mean, granted, that was kind of like I like I was mentioning earlier. Everybody was kind of in their own little gang. Even the police were kind of their own separate gang. So, if you were to find, you know, who's the enemy of my enemy, that would really work. And the police is were everybody's enemy. Oh yes. <laughs> oh nice yeah um i do need <laughs> i do need to say if you do if you're ever caught for something at this age a lot of times it was better even if you were innocent a lot of times it would be better just to beg just to beg and plead just be like the biggest sob story you possibly could Pretty much. I'm turning my light on. It's getting too dark in my oh. living room. Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez, ow. I know they threw him onto a pad, but if they actually threw him like that, it would have hurt. Nice. And this is exactly why they would never leave you alone. Because there, by the way, there's probably sensitive documents behind that desk. I was just gonna say. <laughs> they do the whole psychiatric thing. And that was very much the case back there of like, oh, you're not mentally disturbed. You just need a job and you'll be fine. Like people don't say that nowadays. Why do we have voc rehab? Mm -hmm. We've learned so much about mental illness in the past few years. It's kind of amazing. That is true. True, not a little Diesel, wow. Can I catch it by touching him? <laughs> and great, a lot of times, especially in this age, is like, oh yeah, you need to go get an honest job. Well, there were no honest jobs. I was just going to say... Yeah, notice all the paperwork that's been strewn about the floor. <laughs> right. That's somebody's job to have to go is gonna have to go through that and pick it all up and put it back together to figure out what the heck it is. That's a day. That's at least a day for somebody going right. through each paper. Okay, this goes here, this goes with this. Nice line. <laughs> yeah, and here's what he would do. Lock you all up, considering look at the mess that's there. Right. No, it, it be, no, 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 no. There's no you getting out. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> but uh, again, there isn't no you, oh, you get out of this scot-free. No, you made a huge, like I said, there's going to be at least a day of somebody going through all that paper of, okay, this goes with this document. This goes with this document. Okay, this is in this order, blah, blah, et cetera, et cetera. 
Here's your community service. You get to clean up this mess. Pretty much. And do a good job, because if you don't, oh dear, is this time, if you didn't do a good job in community service, you got the book thrown at you. Yep. Quite literally. Mm hmm And by the way, those books hurt. Oh, yeah. I've had, a, I've had a nun throw a book at me before. It hurts. Why does this not surprise me? Bad kid again in a private school? <laughs> I think you know. No, but here's the sad part. I honestly don't remember what I did. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've heard I don't, you don't you don't mess with the Catholic school nuns. I am absolutely scary. Yeah. Well, like I said, I went to a private Catholic school where the nuns were totally allowed to wacky one. Yeah. I am one hundred percent honest. I'm I one hundred percent am shocked. I do not have the indentation of a ruler on the back of my hand for how many times they whacked me with one. Yeah. My mom tells me stories of when she was a kid and she used to take dance lessons and her dance teacher was this really scary older German woman. If you didn't execute <laughs> the, if you didn't execute the moves just right, she would whack you with her cane. Yep. Doesn't surprise me at all. I don't want you going anywhere near the fighting games. The, like, it's like, here's the thing. The fight's going to happen, and there's absolutely nothing you can do. Dude, did you just slip a note? <laughs> but yeah, it's like, here's the thing. The fight's going to happen. There's legitimately nothing you guys can do. And it sucks. <laughs> yeah. I love the stained glass in the background. Very nice. Oh, yeah. Although I'm curious who went through and lit all those candles. Because I don't know if those are prayer candles or or what. Because if they're prayer candles, holy cow, a lot of people are praying for something. I kind of wonder yeah. if that adds to the symbolism. Yeah. Like, I kind of wonder if that was intentional. <laughs> Like, maybe a really, really subtle bit of foreshadowing? Maybe, yeah. It's like I said, it's in t it's hard to say. Because like I said, I don't know if those are, I don't know if those are just lit candles because this is a church and that's what they do, or if those would be prayer candles. It's it's hard to say. I mean, if it was intentional. Yeah, if it of, was, yeah. That's if it was intentional, it's kind of clever if you think about it. Considering... Considering it's Steven Spielberg, I would say it's probably intentional. Considering Steven Spielberg. Because that's one thing about Steven Spielberg. He does his research. He knows his stuff. Yep, I know this song too. Yep. I don't know. This is very similar to Baron and Luthien from Lord of the Rings, so I'm very curious if um, if he used that as inspiration. If they use that as inspiration, very possible. What do you mean? Uh, in in the song, in the tale of Baron and Luthien, a lot of these lyrics are very similar. A lot of what they say is very similar to this. Interesting. So, No, because that's kind of the kicker is the tale of Baron and Luthien wasn't released until very recently, but it was written by J.R.R. Tolkien before his death. So it would have been written before before this, but Christopher, but Christopher Tolkien was actually doing a lot of editing. So I'm very curious 
if he had watched that and if that influenced his writing or what. It's very it's hard to say. But like I said, it J.R. Like I said, the book J.R.R. Tolkien wrote the wrote the book long, long time ago. But Christopher Tolkien was editing it, and like I said, the books didn't come out to recently, so it's impossible to know exactly. You know, if, if this is just coincidence or what, or if it was, or Christopher Tolkien having seen the original movie liked it and decided to incorporate some of that. It's it's impossible to say, but. <clears throat> Nice shot here with the light in the background. Very nice. Oh, yeah. Like I said, when the cinematography... Getting a little too far forward as compared to her. He needed to be like an inch back, but... Well, like I said, when the cinematography works in this movie, it works. Yeah, Definitely. Like I said, the only the only real thing I was getting is like he was starting to get a little too close, and she was still holding still. Where it's like you need to be a little bit back there, but it was still very good. Yeah, like I said, like exactly like I said, they're is that, yeah, it's like oh, this is a fist fight. No, people are bringing guns. Yep. Oh man, I know that actor. Oh gosh, what's his name? I forget. Oh man, I've seen him before. I know I've seen him before. I can't think of who he is. What else was he in? I can't think of it. That's the problem. Oh. <sighs> ah man. No, it's like one of those things of a lot of times if you peek in the background, you'll see extras and you will recognize the extras. I don't think this is an extras actor. I'm pretty sure he's a, actually a guy. But I can't think of anything he's been in or anything. I can't even think of his name. Let me see Stop if I can find it. Real quick. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yep, yep, there it is. Thank you. Yep. And by the way, kids, this is what happens when you decide to mess with the old school gangsters. Yep. Uh, Danny went for the screen. Shoot, uh, it doesn't even look like he's—he doesn't even look like he's credited. So if he was only in that one scene, he must and must. Damn. Oh, yeah. Yep, there's Tony. Yeah. She will Wow, really? Mind you, this would be at a time where everybody knew Batman and Superman. So. Oh yeah. Batman and Superman were a thing in the in World War II. There were comics about I've seen comics of Superman punching Hitler for the love of God. So Yeah, there it is. Like I said, it's like, "Oh yeah, this is a fist fight. No, we're bringing a gun." And like I said, you're going to be lucky if they don't bring guns. Well, they're definitely bringing knives to this fight. Look, here's the thing. Even if you don't take the, even if you take their gun, they're still gonna fight, and they're gonna bring knives and stuff. Yep. They say don't bring a knife to a gunfight, but what about bringing a gun to a knife fight? A lot of times, actually, bringing a gun to a knife fight is even worse because if if I get close quarters, you can't aim the gun at gun at me, but I can stab you repeatedly. Yep. So. There's another there's another reason why this movie is too different from the original to make a comparison. This song wasn't supposed to be used in this context.
like even in the stage show they don't use this song here and it's not supposed like they don't they don't do this song until after riff dies I like that he's trying to break up the break up the fight, but it's, like I said, it's gun. The fight's happening. Yeah. You can you can you can drop the gun into the river. The fight's still gonna happen. I'm a little bit surprised that pipe didn't break. Considering I was just going to say. <laughs> and you're very lucky that gun's not loaded because it'd be very easy to accidentally pull the trigger in this situation. Oh yeah. Which, mind you, obviously they'd be really, they'd probably be using a toy gun for this dance. I very, I, I seriously doubt. I was just going to say on today's episode of Reasons Why Gun Safety is very important on movie sets. Hey, by the way, Alec Baldwin, pay attention. <laughs> too soon. Which, by the way, I've never let, let, let that down. Ugh, too soon. I'm kidding. Yeah. Well, I mean, man, you knew you know exactly how much I hate that guy, so I don't I guess you could say I'm very, very indifferent about Alec Baldwin. Yeah. I it's like one of those I don't hate you or like you. I nothing you. I hate him. I, well, there's I, a reason that I, as much as I would love to review the old the uh, Michael Bay Oh wow, they're actually throwing punches. As much as I would love to do a snark fest of Michael Bay's Pearl Harbor, I'm never going to do it because he's in it. He got the gun. And by the way, what's probably going to happen now is you're going to get shot. Because regardless, you're fighting against your own gang now. You don't do yeah. that. Oh, keep away. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Like like I said, in the in the original movie and in the musical, that was that was not the purpose of this song. But I kind of like what they've done. Definitely. It fits. It very much fits. Oh, yeah. No, but here's the thing. What, Like I said, what's going to happen now is you're going to get your ass shot. <laughs> nice. Whoever the choreographer was. They earned their paycheck. Yes, they did. Yep. Yeah, like I said, you're no longer you're no longer being protected now. Yeah, no shit is happening tonight. They, what they'd actually be doing is locking everything down or, you know, putting a curfew in order. Right. Well, well, they just said right there, I want West Side locked down. No, but here's the thing. Everybody's grabbing pipes, ba chains, baseball bats, everything. Uh, but here's the kicker. You think they ain't going to be coming just as armed? Yep, there's chains. Yep. Axe? Wow, nice. I wouldn't be surprised if there were a fire axe in this or even sledgehammers. Yeah. And uh, by the way, chains, really good. It hurts. And notice everybody is wearing a leather jacket. <laughs> yep. Oh, right in front of the church. Oh, dang. Yeah, 
I I just love this. You have Anita having dirty fantasies in the middle of church. Yep. <laughs> well, I I just love how they did that. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice lighting. Oh God, yes. No, but here's the thing. This fight's going to happen unless... Literally, Tony, the, the only thing that could really solve this is if, is if Tony died. Spoiler alert! Tony were to live, Spoiler alert! <laughs> I, yeah. I'm saying to prevent the fight. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. He died, yeah, but, but it's, like too I, little, it's too little too late. Yeah, at this point, it's probably too little too late. Like I said, the only thing that could possibly happen is if the if the two sides were getting together, Tony were to throw himself in between and just willingly, you know, sacrifice himself. But even then, I'm pretty sure the fight's going to happen. Gosh, a couple of those cars are very much Batman cars. I'm talking like Adam West style Batman. I love it. To the Batmobile. <laughs> Oh, and Maria walks right beside them and no one notices. <laughs> Mabel. Nice. Mabel. Uh, he's a cute kitty. Very cute. I don't have a cat. I don't know. Maybe I've always been kind of more of a dog person, but then again, you know my story with cats, so... <laughs> I don't trust a man who says he dislikes cats. I don't dislike cats, but they dislike me. I do love big cats. I like tigers. I love tigers. <laughs> nice. Oh, come on, Steven Spielberg. Seriously? Yeah. That, that, was, shot? that was a little predictable. Yeah. Oh, and again? Seriously, dude? Spielberg? Come on, that, dude. You're better you than know, that. That's oh, the this, problem this I have. That's the problem I have with this movie is when the cinematography doesn't work, it shows. Like I said, Spielberg, you're better than that. When it doesn't work, it does not work. You gotta hit the lights. That sand pit. Yeah. Salt. Oh, even better. Throw that in their eyes. Yeah, they would actually never have turned on the lights because the last thing they want is the police showing up. And if the lights were on, the police would be like, hey, why are the lights on in this place? Let's go check it out. Oh, he snuck in. Nice save. He's got to be, yep, right there. Like I said, it's going to be all locked up. Good luck getting in there, buddy. Come on, He-Man. I don't think he'd actually lift that. That's pretty tough. Yeah. You got an ally. What's kind of ironic is that's the guy that also wants your girl. I think I think that's why he's doing this is because if if this fight goes down, it's I mean here's the thing: even after the fight, it is very possible she could still be a target. Yep. Yep. The only real question is, would this fight start a whole on gang war? Depends on how it turns out, actually. <laughs> Don't.
Yeah. Here's the thing. The fight's happening. The only thing you could do now is take the gun, fire one shot in the air, and you literally have everybody back away from you. But with how close you are, even if you did that, they're too close to get right in you. Would it be all right if we pause for a bathroom break? Uh, yeah, sure. So, everybody, three, two, one, pause. We should be at one minute, 40, 51. Pretty close to? Yeah. One minute, 40, okay. 52. Oh, wow, my gosh. One second. So, yeah, uh, everybody go take a bathroom break real quick. I actually know you need to go get a drink. So, everybody, we will be back and give us one moment, okay? All righty. All right. This is the first time ever a bathroom break for a snark fest. Like I said, I had to go get a drink anyway, so bear with us. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> One intermission, intermission, which, granted, considering how long this movie is, it's going to happen. Because this movie's, oh gosh, pretty, I don't know, how, how long is this? Yeah, we got, an, we got a whole hour left almost. So, yeah, this movie's almost just shy of three hours long, so. Yeah, bear with us. Becky should be back momentarily. Mom yeah, my gosh, words momentarily, and then we can get back into this because we're, we're kind of starting to sprint to the end here. Oh my gosh, wow, so many people. <laughs> You're welcome to come sit with us. Sure. Okay, it opens at six. Okay. So, welcome back. So. Alrighty. All right, so we'll go ahead and get back into this. That's the first time. Okay. Everybody, like I said, you should be at one hour, 40 minutes, 51 seconds, or 52 seconds. They're about in. Or in. And in three, two, one, play. Got to get pretty much right into this fight here. <laughs> Bringing flat. Wow, there it is. <laughs> Here's the thing, Tony, you shouldn't even be there. Like I said, you're considering you were in prison, yeah, you shouldn't even be there. Yep. That's what makes the stakes even even higher. Yep. I kind of appreciate that they made that part of Tony's backstory where he'd gone to prison for something and he's trying to turn over a new leaf. Yeah, and then just gets complete. I, I, I don't even want to say he was roped into this because this is because like I said, the fight was going to happen no matter what, no matter what you did. So, I mean, here's the thing. I don't even think it was literally you dancing with her. I think it was just this cake. And from everything we've seen is like this, this powder keg, the spark was, we were just waiting for a spark and was going to happen sooner or later. Yep. Yeah, like I said, from everything from everything being said, this was very much we're every everybody was just looking for an excuse to fight. Oh yeah. Ouch. I noticed that Tony's not fighting back. 
Because he really doesn't want the, he doesn't want this to happen. Well, like I said, unfortunately for you, in this time frame, it's going to happen, no matter yeah. what you. Know. Like I said, it's like he's going to come in. Yeah, like I said, he's not going to fight you. So fight someone who will. Yeah. You shouldn't have said that. You should not have said that. Like I said, nothing. You're, there's nothing you can do now, dude. Yeah. So what are you gonna do? Fight? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're all screwed. Yeah, you're already getting your ass pummeled. Yeah, all of you oh, are screwed. So slid on the salt. He's trying, he's again trying. It's like, I don't want this, dude. I don't want this. But here's the thing he still wants it. Yep. Oh, oh shit. Knife. Like I said, everybody's coming here armed. Everybody knows everybody has a weapon of some kind. It's just a matter of what. Tony, the only thing you can do now is really fire a shot in the air and try to split them apart. That's it. Because, like I said, people are dying tonight. There's nothing you can yeah. do. Yeah. I don't know of any knife fights that, that that's that dance-like, though. Oh, disarmed. Nice disarm, too. I don't like the glaring light sources. It's making it hard to see what they're doing. Yeah, that I don't really get. Like I said, when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Oh, he's dead. You just got stabbed. Yep. Yeah. And you killed me. You did this. Expressions on all of their faces. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, you're take it out. He's gonna die. Leave it in, because yeah. like, he might not die with that. Yeah, now he's dead. Had you left the knight in, you probably he probably could have lived, even in this time. Yeah. And it's an all-out brawl. Yep, yeah, and the brawl starts, and this is pretty much how it goes. Yep. And then the police show up. Pretty much. Just waiting for the sirens. Yeah, they're there. Now the question is, is Tony going to run with them? Because, and notice how the police are showing up and no one can, everybody's riding the same way and there's no fight going on. There's the gun. Oh. <laughs> okay, the police would not be coming in this short when they saw bodies. They'd be running in to see how they're dead. I was just going to say, this has got to be the slowest investigation I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And wait until Maria finds out that your brother, her brother, is dead. Wait for it. I find it kind of, I find it kind of interesting that they chose to make Maria a cleaning lady in this. In the original and in the musical, she was a seamstress. Hmm. Interesting. He 
Lady Rebecca Wang. Wow. Where are they? They must be at like a dress store considering all the mirrors. Yeah, this is a high end department store. I see. <laughs> We have eight floor. Wow, eight floors clean. Yeah, high end, but hey, probably super well paying too. So hey, there's that. She's dreaming about her boyfriend. <laughs> I'm happy in my fancy rich lady apartments. Oh, here we go. Yep. This was one of my audition oh, they, songs they, they, when I tried out better. when I tried out for the musical in high school. This was my audition song. They ch I noticed they changed the words. Yeah, because notice that gay no longer means happy. Mm -hmm. That's something that bugs me about how the how just how language has changed in our in our, within our history. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Clean the mirror. I was just going to say that's going to bug me. Yeah, if you don't clean that spray off, it's going to start. It's going to make it a lot harder. It's going to streak. But if it dries, it's going to be worse. Oh, nice. I honestly almost feel like this could have been more powerful if it were before the fight, but... Well, that's how it was in the original. It was before the fight. Yeah, I think this would have been better to... I think I think this they should have had this song and scene before the actual fight, so... I mean, I appreciate that they took some risks and tried to, like, it almost feels like they're telling the story in a different order, if you will, than they did the original. But at the same yeah. time, it's like some of the choices work, some of them don't. Yeah. This is one choice I feel like doesn't. Yeah, definitely. Is that her boss? Yep. <laughs> Uh, there's no way she'd be getting in on the stand. No, she'd be cracking the web now. <laughs> Gosh, this just reminds me of when I was trying on suits for my brother's wedding. <laughs> oh, gosh, the Halls of Mirrors is going to make me so disoriented. It's sick. Ah. And it's pretty, it's pretty obvious how they shot this. It's just a crane shot. That's how they avoid the camera getting in the mirror. Yeah, I kind of feel like this whole, that whole sequence was just Spielberg being like, okay, I'm going to show off my chops. Yep. How to avoid getting the camera in the mirror, 101. And, but like I said, that's exactly why they did all those high angle shots. This is very much a product of the times. Notice the fallout shelter sign on the wall. Yep. I saw that. Once again, very much a product of the era. Mm -hmm. Was well, he dying? <laughs> the way he's acting, you'd almost expect there to be a knife in his back. <laughs> right? There's an accident. I saw that. Yeah, your brother's dead. Ooh. Don't 
ask uh, about the guy uh, you like with the guy who's competing for your affection. Bad move. Yep. Yep. There it is. Yeah, there's the police. <laughs> And this would happen to identify the bodies. Yeah, we don't see this. You know, in the original. Is, you know, she knows, but yeah, she's just praying. Yeah, right now she's Ooh. just praying that. I mean, she, they've told her that that he's dead, but she's just right now praying that it's that it's not him. It's misadventure. That's not him. That's what's yeah. going through her mind right now. I, I am actually really impressed that they chose to include this. Yeah, it makes and that there, much yeah. more. Mm -hmm. Makes it that much more tangible. Yep. Like I said, having been in that situation, you're just praying, just God, please have it be someone else. Have it be her long lost twin or something. But no. And then when you realize it's real, it's a little bit like a thread being cut. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, I mean, on her face, you saw as soon as they, as soon as that sheet was pulled back, you saw, just, you just saw the life leave her. That was it. And like I said, having been in a situation like that, yeah. He's doing the only thing he can do. It's like, I had to see you, but I'm going to the cops. I don't know. How do I, for how do I forgive you for letting the cops take you? How do I forgive you for killing my brother? Yeah, Priorities. no doubt. There's a lot of forgiving that needs to be happening here. Priorities. <laughs> Like I said, there was nothing Tony could have done. He could, he shouldn't have even gone, even though no. he knew where. I mean, the only thing he put, could have possibly done is gone to the police and say, "Hey, this is where the fight's happening," and then just immediately bail. Yeah, because like I said, there was there was no, there was no good in this, no matter what happened. Nope. And here you very you get the sense of what they're saying, even if you don't speak the language. Yeah, I thought that was really clever how they did that. Very, yeah, very good. Bominos, yep, Bominos, yep. Yep. And now she's going to have, yep. Yeah. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Oh, nice. Look, you see how much her hand was shaking there. Very nice. It's okay, Valentina. News like this would make me want to drink too. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Oh, from when the forest store first opened. Nice. Call back yeah. picture. I really like too the the take that they did on this character. It's like she's trying so hard to keep her business going and to get this kid out of you know to go on the right path, and just nope. And especially too, like there's that added complexity, like. Because she's Puerto Rican and she'd married a white man. She was once in Tony's shoes, too. Yep. Yeah, and now here, yeah. I'm trying to get a statement from her. Oh, good God. Good luck on that one, buddy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 
yeah, when I it's funny because when I found out that Rita Moreno was well. when I found out that Sorry. Rita Moreno was gonna be in this movie as like a female version of Doc at first that had me really worried because I'm like, is this gonna be like shoehorning in a character? But no. The way they've done this was, the way they've done her character was really, really good. Yeah, she's selling it very well. Oh yeah, and it, like I said, it adds that extra level of complexity to the. Oh god, story. they're gonna totally fuck. They're gonna make out love. Yeah. Make love right yeah. Now. Why is it in all romance movies they have to make love right off the bat? Because how long have these people known each other? Like three days. Yeah. Maybe. Don't worry. They're just don't worry. We can just screw each other. <laughs> isn't, isn't that a nostalgic critic joke? Of like, oh yeah, we met each other a day ago. We, you know, we doing something, something. Now we're gonna screw each yeah. other in prison. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> they fell in love faster than they do in Disney movies. Yeah. But like I said, just in this situation, Tony, in this situation, all you could have done is, like I said, the best thing you probably could have done is gone to the police, say, hey, this is where the fight's happening, and then just stay home, just bail, stay home, bail out. Wow, dears, if Anita comes in, it's going to hit the fan. Yeah, yeah, you, you called it. And notice the L-shaped sheets there. <laughs> That's something that always gets me about in like after these two after in like bed scenes, the woman is always fully covered up, but the guy always isn't. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the L-shaped sheets. Yeah. Or not, yeah. <laughs> She's trying to get you out of this. Oh, busted. Literally, go out on you. Get out into the fire escape. Get Tony. Get out into the fire escape. Have her throw your clothing out the window. Don't even linger in the room. And Maria probably shouldn't even be oh, in the room. God. With you. Maria should probably go out. Go out to her. Oh, that way she doesn't get investigated. Something, something I noticed: just the look on Anita's face as she walks by the table that's been set for two. During the tonight song, we see her setting the table. For her and Bernardo to have dinner together. And just the look on her face as she walks by the table. It says those little details that are really, really good. Really powerful, yeah. Yeah. Busted. Yep. And she knows, too, exactly who you are. Yep. Right, yeah, right now, it's like she's seen a ghost. Yeah. Uh, Maria, run. You're dead. You are screwed, sis. Screwed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was not a very hard slap. There's another thing I mean, that mind you, it's hard to get a slap to sell, but there's another thing I've noticed about the costumes too just now. What's Particularly in everything they've chosen to have Maria in. Maria is always in white or pink or some variation. Yeah. Always in a very light color to show how naive and innocent she is. And I'm like, again, it's those little subtle details that are just really, really good. Well, you could also see that Anita was, earlier was wearing, the, you know, like you said, a bright color. And now she's wearing a dark dress. Yep. Notice, too, her clothes are a little more conservative. Mm-hmm.
Sorry. <laughs> the battle of songs, yeah. Yeah, I have mixed feelings about how they did that because, like the like where they're singing over each other, that's not that's not in the original, and I'm not sure how I feel that's, about that's, it. That's a talking. That's a talking. That's a talking thing. So, and I'm and I know that Steven Spielberg loves talking, so I do know that he prob that's probably. I don't want to say that he's taking that, but. Yeah. Yeah, you have a love. I had a love. Yeah, again, you have a love, and it's all you have. I had a love. I have nothing left. I almost feel like this should have been better. Like they knew each other, like Maria and Tony knew each other for a while. And we're like secretly, you know, we're like secretly get, you know, secretly going to dates and whatever. And then only got caught at the dance. And that, but yeah. I feel like they kind of tried to introduce that idea by having them go to the same school, but it would have been nicer to see them commit to that idea. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things that it's like you. It's it's hard to make it sell, but you have to. If you're going to do it, you have to go all the way on. Yeah, you got like to commit. It's hard to sell, but but yeah, like you said, is like these two have known each other for three days. I'm sorry, I just I don't sell that you are in love with him. I know you're a teenage idiot, but still. Oh, now they're singing together. I don't think she could have gotten over that that quickly, but I was just going to say. I almost feel like Anita is just like, oh, yeah, yeah, and just snap her neck. I feel like I feel like this this sort of change of heart for Anita is a little is happening a little too quickly. But I also appreciate that they're at least trying to show that change of heart with I the agree. little time they have. Like I said, I think what probably could I. I, I Hard to say, but what it may have been able, what may have been able to sell it is if like they had spread out between the fight scene till now and have her interacting with Tony and then like getting to know Tony and before she knew that Tony killed him, maybe. But yeah, like, but this it's this change of heart is happening way too fast. Yep. Yep. And notice this is how this is how a lot of times they would have you know hold their you know remembrance of a guy oh, yeah. in funerals. Just go somewhere where they where they were you know prime because they said he was a boxer. Notice they're in a boxing ring. Yeah. Oh, we got a spy here. You're getting you're not being a good spy at all, buddy. You should be down so they can't see you just listening. I was just going to say, considering anybody's shtick is that she's good at slipping in and out of the shadows, they're not doing a very good job of showing that here. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Being very conspicuous. I mean, mind you, it is kind of get hard to get something like that sell from based on the camera angle they had, but I really feel like you could you could make that work. 
Yep, he's got the gun. Yep. How many shots are in that gun? I just thought of something terrible. What? Chino's got a gun. Tony's on the run. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm good. Sorry. I like had it. to. I that had is good. to. You're on point. That's on point. Yeah, they kill one, you kill them. It almost sounds like he's like trying to be like, don't do this, they'll kill you if you do. <laughs> you are not hiding in a <laughs> seriously, I'm they they saw you. Were they actually married or yeah, and here she's just saying political answers, yeah. <laughs> Chino's oh, got, got a gun. There it is. <laughs> like, how would they know that he got a gun, though? Yeah. Because no shots were fired. They didn't have any. They didn't see any gun casing, like any bullet casings there. They have. They have no reason to suspect he has a gun. Plus, Chino picked up the gun after the fight before the cops came. So how would they mm -hmm. know? Yeah, there's there. They have absolutely nothing to go on. This is the this is the characters know more than they absolutely should. Hooray, exposition fairies! Pretty much. Mind you, that is something that bugs me so much with movies of like these people know more than they should. Yeah, when when the characters are the exposition fairies. Mm -hmm. I wrote a fanfic in high school where I basically made one of my one of my close friends a self insert of him, basically, <laughs> and I turned him into the exposition fairy, and that was his biggest nitpick <laughs> with the story. He's like, "Why am I saying all this? I know too much." I'm sorry. I just no. I'm sorry. Just the way you say that just my just ma imagine me like just made me imagine a scene like this. Is two people are talking. It's like, wait, how do we know this? And then just like a little guy in a fairy costume. Doo -doo -doo -doo, allow me to explain. <laughs> That's pretty much what what I what my oh, point was. That. I I turned him into the exposition fairy, and I even gave him wings. Yes, just win, pure win. That needs to happen now. Oh. I that story was was a story that failed so hard it won. I don't care. It wins. Just from what you said, I wins. I need to read it now. <laughs> I gotta see if I can find it. It was fucking stupid. Oh. Thirteen-year-old me thought it was the greatest and funniest thing ever. Adult me thinks it's embarrassing. It is embarrassingly bad. Well, if you don't have anything in your past that you don't look back on and cringe, where did you even have a childhood with living? Touche. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> Tony just wants to be alone right now. <laughs> yep. So, one of the Jet Girls, the dark-haired one, that's actually Maddie Ziegler, who was in that god-awful fucking movie, Music with Sia. Wow. Speaking of things that people are going to cringe on in their pasts, if Maddie Ziegler has a soul, I hope she cringes so hard. It was a paycheck, it was a paycheck, it was a paycheck. It was a paycheck, and I'm pretty sure she's being groomed by Sia. It's called, they're called coffee and donuts. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, and notice. The... Okay, good sell there for the for one of the guys in the background there, the guy leaning against the table. When when he said he had when she said he has Riff's gun, he's like, oh crap. But then he's but then she said he's go he's going after Tony, and there was a little bit of like, okay, he's not going after me. <laughs> yep. Yeah, there you done good. You done good, pig. You done good. Oh, hello. I don't think yeah, yeah, you'd want to leave. This isn't gonna work on you. This isn't gonna work for you. Nope. This scene is so hard to watch. <sighs> yeah. This is yeah, this doesn't work for you there, babe. This no. isn't gonna work. You're, lucky, yeah. you're gonna be lucky if you walk out, pretty much. You you can guess what's probably gonna happen to Anita next if you've never seen this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, there. Yeah, there. This is not a. This is not a good place for you to be. Even if, even if you were trying to broker peace, this. Yep. Yeah. Yep. There, yeah, I'm sorry. There, this doesn't work out for you. Nope. I don't think you. I don't think there's leaving. Yeah. I'm sorry. You shall not pass. Sorry. I do like the fact that they added Graziella in this scene to try and at least help Anita get out unharmed. But yeah, there. Like I said. With considering what has happened, I mean, here's the thing: you'd be lucky to be able to walk in here before the fight and walk out unscathed. Yep. Yeah, she's trying to help, but... Yeah, I at least like that they added that. And then her efforts are in vain. Yeah. She got a good strike in there, though. Supposedly, Rita Moreno had a lot of creative input in this scene because she was the original Anita, and she said she never understood why they needed to have an attempted rape scene in the candy store. Yeah, no doubt. And this yeah. is where all of Anita's optimism is just gone. Yep, there is no more optimism now. If she had a gun in her purse, she'd be using it right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's some she's right now she's dead to the world. Yeah. And here's the thing. Had they not had they not actually tried to kill her, she probably would have been truthful. But no, with what they with what happened, yeah, she's totally no. You know, they she's, weren't, putting, she's gassed. Like no, they weren't trying to kill her. That was attempted rape. Yeah, yeah like I yeah, like I said, but this right now she's just, right now she's just scorched earth. I know all your names. There is one thing in the background I just noticed now that I didn't that I didn't see before that I actually really kind of liked. I have you, I won't have to be able to if, the if you look out the door, you. if you look out the door, you can see the other girls comforting Anita. That is a nice touch. 
I was not expecting that. Definitely a good touch. Like I said, when the and little you know details the work. She has, that they could easily... Yeah. Right there. You dishonor yourselves. Yep. That sticks. Yep. That, especially in that time frame, oh man, that is the biggest insult you could give them. Yeah. No, consider, considering the time frame and who they are, that line, you dishonor the dead, that is the biggest insult you could have ever given them, period. Oh, yeah. Just the little stuff in this movie, when it works, it works. Yeah, and she's like trying to... She's like trying, she's like, Maria's dead. She's trying to break it to him, but she doesn't know how to break it to him. She's like trying to make it easy, but it, there is no, it, sorry, there's nothing, like I said, there's nothing you can do. This movie is right now, it's, everything's on fire. <laughs> Just come like, out and yep. say it. There's no hope for you. Yeah. Yeah, but like I said, you never even should have gone to that fight. Well, you say you say you shouldn't be alive. You're about to be dead in about five minutes or so, buddy. Pretty much. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> Which, I mean, granted, this kind of, we are kind of now sprinting to the end here, so. Yeah, we've got, like, what, 20 minutes left in the movie? Uh, if that. Yeah. A little less than that. Uh, 1840. <laughs> 1840, yeah, we are, you're pretty dang close. Yeah, like, I mean, the, yeah, Gina. <laughs> the, every time I say, I say that now, I'm thinking of. <laughs> Gino, stop, Maria, yeah. Gino's got a gun. <laughs> You'll never be able to unhear that. Yeah, I know. It's all because of you. Shame on <laughs> granted, me. There are a lot of things, granted, granted, there are a lot of things I cannot unhear and unsee because of you, so that's fair. <laughs> Our friendship has been very interesting, you know that? What other friendship has as many inside jokes as we do? That's true. <laughs> and I don't think any other friendship has someone trying to kill the other party so often. Oh! And there's one of our inside jokes. With laughter. Yes. <laughs> and of course, whenever I go around telling that inside joke, I end up on fa uh, in Facebook prison. Seriously, Facebook? What the fuck? <laughs> and apparently my cat's trying to use the kitchen chair as a jungle gym. Because <laughs> of course cats. Yep. Yeah. Gino, take me, take me. Let me be with my love. <laughs> well, you're about to get what you wanted, dude. I... Yeah. Does she love him? The way she's acting is almost like she loves him. Yeah, that's the one thing I don't get about this this version is how they interpreted the character. Anybody. There's Maria. Yep. And oh mind. boy. Oh shit. Oh, that would not that shot wasn't fatal. That shot probably is. No, that first shot went through about the shoulder right here. I don't think that'd be fatal. The second shot went through about went through his chest. That would probably do it though. I was just going to say, the second one hit him right square in the back. Yeah. The second shot was much more, yeah.
He's got way too much color in his face. I was just going to say he looks awfully healthy for somebody who's a few minutes yeah, from dying. Considering, considering, how, considering where that shot hit, he'd be bleeding ex exponentially. He has way too yeah. There's no way he's dying this quickly if he got shot like that and have that much color in his face. You would be you'd be surprised how long people can survive after being shot. I really doubt he died that quickly. Even with that, even with that shot where it was. You know, like I said, he looks awfully healthy for somebody who's just been shot. Yeah, definitely. And notice how no one's doing anything. They're all just standing. <laughs> yep. How do you fire? How do you not know how a gun works? Considering that's probably a six shooter or two have been fired, there are four enough. Now is not the time to be playing Russian roulette, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Like I said, it looks like a six shooter. It's po it could possibly be seven, but considering there have been two full two five, two shots, I would say it likely has four to five bullets, depending on how how large of a revolver it is. It this looks is like a six shooter. Not the time shooter. to play Russian roulette. Yeah, no doubt. What is she doing? It's like she just had a moment. Yeah. And she threw the gun away. <laughs> okay, okay, his head was turned the other way. Now it's turned this way. <laughs> Continuity errors. <laughs> Mabel thinks she's a paper towel. <laughs> Come, I will dry you off. Strange child. And notice, notice how no. I want to point out how much care they have in this. This is very true. This is this, they would be very careful with this. No, yep. Yeah. The gun's still on the ground. And the gun has mysteriously vanished. I will say, that, again, another small detail that's just a nice touch. You see Valentina taking Chino by the arm and walking him away. Yep. Like... Oh, she went down to pick up the gun there, even though yeah. the last shot it was on the ground. So, poor cut there, but... No, but again, just that little detail of, like, this guy, you watched him grow up, and he just shot the kid who was basically your son. Yep. Just, wow. Again, just the little, little details they choose to incorporate in here. Oh, and they're the police. Five minutes sooner there, buddy, would have been very expedient for you. Yeah. But again... How else Spielberging does shot. I'm sorry. Again, how else does Romeo and Juliet end? It's all a case of piss poor timing. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. They're holding black. Yep, there it is. Yep. They yeah, they held black they held on black there a little too long, honestly, but a little bit, but I, I didn't. Have... I wouldn't have noticed unless you said something. It's one of those you don't you you're not gonna notice unless you know what to look for. Yeah. Well, it's just I've been as you know I've been you know studying movies a long time, especially I've been studying a lot of movies now, especially on how they end. Is there's always a hold the black, and how long you hold that black is kind of. It, I don't know. It's it's like if you hold it too long, it's just it, you know you just feel it. And that one held it just like it's a bit it's too a long. Like, maybe, yeah. 
I think they probably could have cut they could have cut to credits probably like maybe two or three seconds earlier. It would have been a little bit better, but Oh no wonder. So Rita Moreno was also the producer on this, which which explains ah, why she had so much that explains why she had so much mm -hmm. input on certain scenes. Yeah, no doubt. I mean heck I wouldn't be surprised if she was actually directing it honestly in a lot of parts. I wouldn't be surprised so, either. Because, yeah, I mean, she was the producer. She was obviously had a lot of pull. So, yeah. So. Well, like I said, especially the part where Anita gets attacked in the candy store, when Rita Moreno first played Anita in the original, she said she did not understand why it had to come down to that. And she said it was actually kind of hard to do that scene at times because something very similar happened to her when she was growing up and had first moved to New York city. She said when she was younger, she was attacked in an alley because she wandered into the wrong neighborhood. That's just heartbreaking. And like I, and like we were talking about that, that stuff happens. you just, you, you can be a kid, you go into the wrong neighborhood and yeah. Yeah. She Ariana said Ariana Debose. Yeah. Yeah. Ariana Debose was Anita. And like I said, she stole every scene she was in. I love she her. did. They couldn't have picked a better Anita. They really couldn't have. No, no doubt. She was she was on point. I liked her a lot. So but yeah. She has a she has a bright future. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm just hoping Hollywood doesn't destroy her like it tends to do because let's just be real. Hollywood's not a good place. Mm -mm. How many times? How, how many kid? How many? How many bad stories are there of, ki especially kids, growing up in Hollywood and just being complete disaster areas? So, I don't know if a Puerto Rican gang would ever go by the Sharks. I don't know. That's, yeah, so, some of these, some of the names of these gangs, I kind of have to wonder about. Yeah, I don't. So yeah, like I mean, the Jets. Even the Jets are a little bit. Yeah, but yeah. So I will say that is better than I thought it was going to be. I because like I said, Steven Spielberg does for dad. His, I'm assuming his father, Steven Spielberg's father, must have passed away before this. But it's hard to say. I don't know. Yeah, even but, even yeah. this end credits, yeah, even this uh, shot here where the credits are rolling, because everybody knows on Disney Play they kind of have like the trail, like the poster of the movie in the back. The poster here is very much Romeo and Juliet. So. Yeah, they went really on the nose here. They but did. Yeah. So that was the remake of West Side Story, everybody. Like I said, it was a lot better than I was thinking it was going to be. Considering Steven Spielberg, like I said, Steven Spielberg has a specific style of directing, and I didn't think it would it was going to attribute itself to this, but it did very well. So I got to give him points. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, like I said, the stuff in the movie, when it works, he knocks it out of the park. When it doesn't mm -hmm. work, you can tell. Oh, yeah. Oh, Luckily, yeah. there aren't very many of those moments in this. <laughs> yeah, exact. Not in yeah, not in this. There aren't a whole lot of like moments of that. And even if there are, it's more of a nitpick, if anything else. Yes. Definitely. Um. At the same time, it's like like I said, when you do a remake, at what point do you add so much new stuff that it almost becomes uncomparable yeah, to the original? Because that's exactly what's happened here. Mm -hmm. Well, like you said, a lot of the song, a lot of the scenes, and a lot of the songs were put in different places or completely not existent in the original. So, but considering this, considering the, I, I think it is a faithful remake, all things considered. Like I said, he did he took a lot of creative liberties with it, but considering the original, there, I don't think you could make the original really sell in today's audiences. Right. Maybe, and but, yeah. I think the fact, too, that Rita Moreno had a lot of creative input as the executive producer just lended itself to what this ended up being. Made it good? Yes. No, that that is something a lot of time. A lot of times with bad directors, you'll hear about where like um, George Lucas is a prime example of with because I don't know, because most people agree that episode three is actually pretty good. From what it sounds like, George Lucas was like, no, we're going to do this. But then, like, Steven Spielberg and other directors were like, no, we're going to make this good. And quite literally forced him to do things that he didn't want to do. G granted, I shouldn't say do things he didn't want to do, but... Because uh, George Lucas is kind of director of... He'll recognize good ideas, he just has to think the ideas are his own. Uh, so they kind of fed him ideas to do that. So, But I really think that could be the case with this, too, of... of she of 
um, blah, 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 words are hard, of Rita just being like, no, you know, if not having direct control over Steven, having at least a pipeline into his brain of like, this is a good idea, this is a good idea, do this, do this. So, yeah. So, yeah, like I said, that was a lot better than I thought it was going to be very good. It makes me re-interested to actually watch the original again, which considering I'm not really into musicals, eh. So, hey, maybe. I I do feel like if this is a way that people check out the original, because even though, like I said, the original does not hold up very well by today's standards, it's mm-hmm. still an important piece of cinematic history. Definitely. Well, I mean, granted, that's a lot of things. Is like watch watch movies from the past and how well do they sell nowadays? And a lot of them just they don't do it that well, right? So, but yeah, I but yeah, like I said, this makes me really want to see the original. And I mean, is it as good as this one? Who knows? Like I said, I haven't seen that one in forever. And like I said, when I saw that one, I was at me in school, so it's very fair that I may have been asleep through most of it. So we both know how I was in school. <laughs> Yeah. All righty. Yeah, let's just put that. Over. So yeah, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you again, Becky, for joining me last minute. So uh, everybody, I hope everybody has a good night, and we will hopefully see you next week. Good, good, good night, night and good luck. So.